Hey, welcome back to Chinwag. Paul and I had an awesome time with our special guest, Chris Gethard at SF Sketchfest. And we even got to take questions from our live audience. And Chris is a great podcaster himself. I've been listening to his podcast, Beautiful Anonymous. And it's, a, it's a, just a remarkable format and you never know where it's going to go. And he's a great storyteller and a great interviewer. So I highly recommend it. And, you know, Chris is a remarkable comedian, but he also can get really dark and scary with his stories. And then he sort of turns it around. He's really a fascinating guest. In this little nugget we're offering, you get to find out if Chris has ever had a paranormal experience of his own. So have a listen to this week's bonus. Oh my God! Do we want to try and have some Q and A? Yeah, I think we should try we to should. hear a little Q and A. Yeah, Mike. people should line up if they want. So to if ask you have a question, questions, if you um, if you dare to ask a question, here we go. Uh, Here's one brave soul. Here we go. This is the I am church guy. Maybe I don't know. So, Chris, you've spent yeah. a lot of time writing about kind of all of these crazy stories. Have you yourself ever experienced something that, like, you couldn't quite explain or felt was supernatural? Uh, I have had two. Um, one, to be fair, was also at a stretch of life where I would soon be diagnosed with mental illness for <laughs> yes. the first time in a diagnosable way. Yeah. But I did once in college after visiting an abandoned mental hospital that night. Uh, I woke up and there was a gray man in Revolutionary War Guard with no face standing next to my bed. Uh -huh. And I went like that at him and he went like that at me and then disappeared. <laughs> wow. He was as scared but of the, you. The more terrifying one is basically I grew up in a neighborhood in New Jersey where my grandparents were Irish immigrants. My mom was born in that neighborhood. My brother and I were raised in that neighborhood. My Dad's parents lived around the block. My mom's parents lived three blocks away. My aunt lived around the corner. And a lot of families were like this. These Irish Catholic families that for three generations, everybody knew each other. Right. And I would walk around and, and some of the older Irish people would stop me and say like, hey, how are you related to Paul Kelly? And I'd say, well, he's my grandfather. Uh -huh. They'd be like, you look exactly like him, but he had dark hair. It's uh -huh. crazy. And that would happen to me my whole childhood. And when I was in middle school, I remember story still freaks me out. I had a, a very mean science teacher named Mrs. Grussell, which is a great name <laughs> for a mean Grussell. teacher. Yeah. She took no shit <laughs> and she would give you, like she would give you detention if you sneezed, yeah, you know? Right. And I froze up in her class and started like seizing up. Uh -huh. And the kid next to me went, hey, what's wrong? And you did not speak out loud in her class. So in my head, I was like, man, I'm going to get him in trouble. Oh no. And then I looked and she was looking at me all scared. And I could feel that tears were pouring down my face. Uh -huh. And I could also see the clock in the front of the room. And it had, I was like, man, it feels like this has been going on for 10 minutes, uh -huh. but I can see that it's only been like a minute. Ma and then I, uh -huh. right uh -huh. after that, it, I went to lunch and uh, I was off all day and had a like weird headache and exhaustion. And as soon as class, school was done, I did not wait for my friends who I usually walked home with. I ran home. When I got home, uh, my mom was at the kitchen table crying. Uh -huh. And I was like, well, uh, what's going on? And she goes, I just got back from the hospital. So I have an uncle. He's, he's uh, my mom's only brother. He, he joined the Navy or the Air Force and went to Hawaii when he was a teenager. Uh -huh. And he, my, it made my grandfather very emotional when he would call uh -huh. for a number of reasons you can imagine when your only son joins the Navy yep. and goes yeah, as far away as yeah. you can. Yeah. He, my grandfather, he said, oh, your uncle Paul called your grandfather. And your grandfather got very emotional. And then we lived three blocks away. Uncle Paul called me and said he was talking on the phone with Pop and just heard him collapse. And he, at that moment. He goes, I ran, my mom goes, I ran over there. I helped get him to the hospital. Your Aunt Rose is there. Now uh -huh. I got to get back. I just came home to unlock the door for you. I go, Mom, when did it happen? Right. And she goes, I was eating my lunch. The exact Same stretch time. of time oh, wow. Amazing. that he wound up having this stroke. And then the really, really strange kicker, because I'm like, maybe, but the really strange kicker is when he came home, he was on um, home care with uh -huh. like the bed in the living room yeah, and the yeah. nurse who would come to the house. Sure. My mom pulls my brother and I aside and she goes, hey, pop's home and we're going to go visit him. But you got to brace yourselves. He barely remembers Nan. He often doesn't remember me. Mm. 
sometimes he gets like you know stroke mm-hmm. that people yeah, have yeah, strokes yeah. he's like sometimes he's like why are you in my house and you might get scared right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you get scared Super it's okay yeah. he hasn't been recognized anybody we walk into the house and he's just sitting on the couch and he, you know he has just had a stroke he's kind of you know like just staring at the floor and i walk in and he goes like this points at me pats the couch next to him i sit down next to him and he just held me and we both started crying Amazing. wow and i was like that is yep. some real Irish Catholic <laughs> shit. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, uh, am I supposed that's to? Great. That's amazing. Is that for him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a T-shirt for yeah, you, yeah, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Paul. absolutely. Can we throw more of these around? Chin wag, T-shirt swag. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing you say there that I find really interesting is that being in some kind of extreme emotional state. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh makes it hard to know subsequently what maybe was really going on. Because I can remember being very depressed times of my life. Seems to be the time when the most weird stuff would happen. Yeah. Cognitive stuff, strange stuff like that. It, it makes sense. In yeah, a weird way. You're in an extreme emotional state. You're actually maybe more receptive or something. And I don't yeah. want to write it all off to that. No. But I know but that the one in my mind I've always kind of said, you know, shortly after that I was under the care of a psychiatric professional for the first time. So we can tie that one. The one with my grandfather. I was just an innocent But I don't think kid. Yeah, but, I, but I actually am not even saying that it dismisses it. I'm yeah. saying that it actually it maybe lays you open to right. stuff yeah. that you're actually maybe, more receptive yeah. of actual stuff. Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that I do actually uh, am acquainted with somebody who moved to Mount Shasta because they wow. were joining the cult of the Lumerians really? and they said that they could speak to them in their minds. Nice. And they were like, yeah, that's what happens is they awesome. come and they talk to you in your mind. Oh, so okay. still alive and Are well. Are they still there? Are they still doing it now? They're you know, um, I'm not totally sure, but I think so. Uh, it's right. a friend of a friend, so they kind of lost contact. But, <laughs> um, but you know... That that's you real. Don't say. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> really. They might be inside of the mountain now. You don't yeah, know. It's, yeah. uh, it, it seems to get a little crazy. Um, my question is actually like, I'm curious. You know, all these stories are so fun and so silly. Do you feel like in the past decade or so, like the the conspiracy theory stories? Are they getting less fun? Like, how do you kind of balance the really crazy, like, horrible, racist, you know, all of that sort of stuff with just like, oh, fun, alien abduction. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) no, it's interesting. No, it's interesting. In a lot of ways, it's like, well, that shit got really not fun anymore, (laughs) didn't it? And and now that's because I think it's, I, I see a difference in some ways between the kind of crazy conspiratorial thinking and some of what we're talking about here. They seem like different things to me. And it's like conspiracy, I'm not that, you know. I think it's like a continuum. And if you, if, if you let the imagination loose, it can do this fun stuff. But it always has the potential for this darker stuff, too, because it's the same kind of stuff. You have unseen causes behind the appearances of things. And it could be like something like, oh, it's a leprechaun. Or it could be like, oh, it's the blood libel, you know, of anti-Semitism. Or it could be like pizza pedophilia. And, you know, so it's all of the same power of the imagination. It's all, yeah. But it seems darker than ever. Maybe that's just immediately, particularly dark. I look at QAnon and I'm like... I do see the track from, I do see how in the 1930s it was like, hey, I met a guy named St. Germain on the side of a mountain. Right, right. And that's not too different than someone's posting on a message board. And I'm not a fake news person at all, but I certainly know that I have the ability to curate news that fits what I want to hear. Yes, totally. I don't think that's an unrealistic thought and that everyone does and that that's a very easy thing to manipulate and that there are people in the world and one thing I learned from working in the past that I also know as a comedian that I know from taking phone calls on my podcast yeah. is that every human being on earth is on a quest to rationalize yep, what's happening around yeah. them all the time. The, the hunger for narrative to make sense yeah. of shit is deep. And yeah. if someone gives you an easy answer, yeah, maybe totally. sometimes you just go, I'm going to give up and go totally. with that because totally. why not? It's, I'm going to organize this shit in some way that's going to make sense. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Because Absolutely. I can't pay my bills totally. and, and maybe it's someone else's fault. Uh, Thank totally. you for that. You know, so No, and that's even what we were it. just talking about, it, the kind of ability to have stories that explain sort of yeah. the other and things like that. And they're negative most of the time. That being said, yeah. Yeah. I don't. do you know this? Because you were on my show. Do you know that if you look it up, there are people who think I am part yes. of Pizzagate. You've yes. seen it. Yeah. No, I know that. I know that. Yeah, you're you, did it. You, well, you performed a sort of 
we fake had, satanic ritual. With Will Ferrell, right? Will, was Ferrell Will was our Ferrell. executive producer. A and jokey <laughs> satanic ritual. We were like, let's do a pagan ritual to try to get the ratings up. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just and like there, are, him there in a is a video can. out there where they did a tricky thing too, and here's the manipulation. They slowed the audio down enough that oh, you, interesting. you wouldn't notice it to the naked ear, but being that it's my voice... And my show, I'm was like, it? they slowed it down just enough that the pacing feels like oh, a little weirder. Really? It sounds That's a little more creepy. like this oh, than it usually does. And when we took a phone call where somebody, Will Ferrell mentioned the word pineapple and Something someone said like that. that's a code of what yes. he likes oh, on his pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's the thing, being and, able to find those things and there were, that are and I was into, on Reddit, there were all these posts about, it was this crazy thing of Will Ferrell, Marina Abramovich, and Chris Gethard are like the northeastern oh hub God. of Pizzagate. And dude, Marina Abramovich? I you guys was, heard? But here's where I'm an asshole. I That's thought it was really, really funny. funny. <laughs> so I went on right, Reddit. I had a Reddit oh, account back then. I was like, yeah, me and sure, Marina. Man. Well, yeah. Me and Will and Marina go antiquing every weekend. And they were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, see? Yeah. Yeah. And then my showrunner no, pulled mistake. me aside and was like, dude, dude don't do these that. are don't the comet ping pong people. Yeah, and I was like, what? He's like, there are people who tried to shoot up that ping pong place in DC. I was like, oh shit. So then I was like, I'll go, I erased it all. And then they were like, see? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no, well, that becomes the labyrinth of that. There's no way around yeah, it. No way it's like you can only get trapped in the, 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 the ritual you guys did is kind of a... It was a little much. It, it's very, yeah, but it's, very, it's very funny and it's very crazy. But I remember when I watched it, I remember thinking, this is probably not that different from an actual, <laughs> yeah, from an actual. satanic ritual. And I thought, I don't think I'd ever be able to be a Satanist because it feels so <laughs> silly doing this. And then we're so here. This is, it's talk San Francisco. I know, I know. This Anton is where LeVay. Anton LeVay, Anton LeVay. the Church of Satan and all of that stuff. And it... It just seems so silly sometimes to me. So well, what, just uh, one, one last thing before uh -oh. we take the next question yes. is there is a weird, like I think entertainment people come in for this a lot more because they're part of the counterculture. Who is Show that? Folk. Oh my goodness. You were oh, there's here, somebody right? behind me. Someone did just slowly walk onto the stage and I was like, oh, no, 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 Uh, this is uh, a change of pace. I, Thank you. I'm please. curious about your. <laughs> I'm curious about your uh, technique. Let me explain. <laughs> there isn't one, man. <laughs> no, no, no. But let, let me explain. Uh, you and Robert De Niro uh -oh. portrayed Jewish characters on uh -huh. film. Uh -huh. How come he can't do it, but you can? How how, how how do you abstract? Are you saying he doesn't do it well? Are you saying he didn't? Yeah, I'm saying like it's Robert uh, De Niro, man. Are you serious? He, uh, like in the in the uh, King of Comedy. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, he's supposed to play a is Jewish he? I character. Just he was an Italian guy in that? Is he? I don't remember. Oh, I guess he is. I don't know. No, no, no. no. He uh, okay. in the King of Comedy. He's supposed to play a Jewish character yeah. and falls flat. Uh -huh. You could do it. Flag. And it's How just... do you do it? <laughs> I don't. There's no really, good really answer to this. Interesting question. Everybody's looking at me, and I'm like, "Oh boy, this is loaded. How do I not fucking step into every possible landmine that's lying in front of me as I make my way across this field?" Of... <laughs> oh dear. It's a mystery. <laughs> it's a real mystery. Have I played Jewish characters? I guess I have. Um, I, well, I thank you for saying that, that I've successfully pulled off playing Jewish characters better than Robert De Niro um, in The King of Comedy. Uh, gee whiz. I don't know. Um, oh, my gosh. And the camera loves you. Okay. And I don't this know why. This is better. Why. We can talk about the camera better. loving me. Yeah. That's what <laughs> Let's talk about how the camera loves I me. Mean, you're, I mean, hates Robert De Niro, by the way. Okay. Can't, repulsed I mean, by Robert De Niro. No, no, you're not Errol Flynn. I but, am not uh, Errol Flynn. <laughs> but the camera loves you. Know loves what, you. dude? That's my memoir title, right I there. Am not. <laughs> I am not Errol Flynn. But the ca but the camera, <laughs> but the camera Fuck loves you. Fuck you, Robert De Niro. <laughs> I am not Errol Flynn. But the camera loves you. The camera does. The camera love me, sir. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and I'm going to just leave it at that. that the <laughs> camera go, loves that's... me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Holy cow. Thank you, sir. Oh, my gosh. I'm, my heart is racing, yeah. as I'm sure you can all imagine. That was beautiful thank to witness. Thank you, sir. Yes. Well that was handled. amazing. Uh, thanks for today. And thank you. Oh, my God, Paul. 
Thank you for your interpretation in the holdovers. Thank you. Kathy. I mean, mm -hmm. oh my God. Thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Um, so I'm representing part of a North Beach family. I'm the one that stayed in San Francisco, and they fled to Redding by Mount right. Shasta. Sure, They're yeah. looking for a more normalcy, <laughs> <laughs> okay. and probably the Republican Party. Uh -huh. so, so I thought it would be real interesting for you guys to, to have a contrast story of this whole culture of these regular families that go up to Mount Shasta and, and camp in their huge vans um, that have queen-size beds. And, and then sometimes the kids are out in the snow wondering why there's a not two. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and also they, the, wow. oh, yeah. go ahead. No, 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 the one footprint. Like, yeah, seeing one footprint. And a one series of, the, of just one footprint? There's, yeah. Like a one, guy's just hopping around a on couple one of, foot? A couple of, one footprint. Oh, that's and, awesome. and in fact, the Lemurians? Yeah, is that the Lemurians? Pardon me? Did the Lemurians, are they thought to have one foot? I, I don't know. Remember, I stayed in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, smart. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just, I mean, but just a thought. And then, and then these guys who aren't particularly aware in that direction, you know, the fathers of kids and stuff, who, who are um, excited and curious to drive off to this, these campgrounds. You see, they're only 20 minutes away or so from Reading. Mm -hmm. And, and they go to the bars and the, the restaurants and they come back saying, you know, they're, wow, yeah, we'd like to go um, because it, there's some really different things going on up here. Clearly. But they don't have a clue what the differences are. Uh -huh. So you're shedding light, but certainly the dark <laughs> darkness. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. shedding the darkness. the darkness. Yeah, thank you. I love Northern California right? so much. Northern California is fucking I amazing, it. dude, right? Yeah. It puts Jersey in the shade, man. Yeah. There is a uh, there is a things. classical old monster. What's that? that? There is a classical old monster that has one giant foot. It's called <laughs> the Skiapodes, and the ancient world was afraid of it. It had a giant foot. It would hop around, and when it would sleep, it would wrap the foot over its head to protect itself this from the like weather. This is like the Middle Ages. Or yeah, something? totally. Yeah, it was totally. ancient, but it was it came up again. It was repeated in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Why the fuck would that? I be don't something know. Now, what if there? this episode of your show restarts it? The ski at Mount shit. <laughs> I know this guy. Yeah, I know this guy. Hey, Steve. <laughs> I have a story that Steve might want to tell. Oh, maybe <laughs> not. Related. I don't know if it's Is a drug related. <laughs> <laughs> About the the West West High School cover. <laughs> I don't know if you want to tell, but it seemed a little related with the almost like cultish way it turned out. Okay, so I know this guy from way back from high school, uh, and he's referring to something that I did, and he's trying to prove what a what a miscreant I was, I guess, by bringing it up. But I was invited to draw the yearbook cover because I was an I was an artist, and they they liked my drawings, oh, he's and so a really I did good it. Artist. Thank you, Peter. He's a great artist. And I, I did it with pointillism. And so our, the school we went to was called West Campus. And I, I hated high school. <laughs> and so in the dot pattern, I wrote, fuck West, <laughs> at the bottom of the page. And like, it's, if, if you knew it was there, you'd see it immediately. But if you didn't know it was there, so it got by the committee, it got by the printer. And then they printed like 20,000 of these because it was like an anniversary edition or something. <laughs> And then my friend said, yeah, you should look at what he wrote there. And then I got, anyway, that, oh, that did you get in so much trouble? I got in so, so much, much trouble, yeah. Trouble. So much trouble, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Peter. I like that. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get a yearbook because they sold out. Yes. So <laughs> Collector's item. <laughs> All right, this is a bit of a two-parter. Uh-oh. So a couple weeks ago, I was in Brooklyn. I'm not going to dox you, but you were exiting the grocery store uh -oh. with your girlfriend, <laughs> okay. and my girlfriend and I were passing, uh -oh. and I'm an enormous fan. Okay. And we were so close, we could have kissed. And oh. I said, holy shit, it's Paul Giamatti. <laughs> okay. So my first question was, did you hear me? Because I was very embarrassed. Uh. <laughs> I did, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like... Do not let, he's gonna kiss him, he's gonna kiss me or you or somebody. So I did hear you, yes. No, yeah, no. My, my, my question is, what is the strangest sand encounter that you've had? Oh boy. Oh boy, this is, I wanna hear yours. Um, oh. 
Oh, gosh. The first thing that leaps to mind was one time I was somewhere out in L.A., I don't remember, at a premiere or something, and a woman came up to me, very, very urgent, very eager to get to me a psychic goldfish she had in a little <laughs> plastic bag of water because it, it was a psychic goldfish. And I remember I was sort of standing in this red carpet, and she was like, I have, the gold, I have a goldfish for you. <laughs> And I was like, what's this? She's like, it's psychic, it's psychic. Like this. And I took the goldfish for the rest of this fucking thing I had to do. You know, talking to like E! Entertainment, like, you know, Access Hollywood. I have this bag of fucking dirty water with a goldfish in it. And I'm just there like, what do you, what do you got there, Paul? I'm like, it's my psychic goldfish. <laughs> I was like, so that was weird. That was interesting. Uh, you good. were much better to encounter, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Chris, what's your weirdest encounter? I did have my psychic goldfish was I did once have someone hand me uh, a single baby shoe. Oh, wow. Weird. That was, and this was many years ago. I did not have a child at the time. Uh, but I mean, I've had, I've had a lot. I used to tour with Mike Birbiglia a lot. Wow. And I would open That's gonna get The great Mike fast. Birbiglia. Yes, amazing, yeah. But my amazing favorite thing was performer. he would say, like, I was, already had the public access show um, but he was really breaking me in as a stand-up and showing me how the road worked. So I did have my own fan base, and he said, he was like, it's very funny, because we will go to shows, and he's like, and I will very quickly know when they are your people waiting after the show, <laughs> and when they are mine. And I was like, how so? And he's like, I mean no offense, because they're all lovely, but your people are visibly broken. <laughs> and they are visibly broken. And he was not wrong, he was not wrong. So I've had a lot of just broken. very heartfelt, <laughs> yes, I tender, sad conversations. I bet you have. Because I did, I did, well, I did, my HBO special was about suicide attempts and mental okay. illness. So I will sometimes have I'm fan sure. encounter. I, I one time brought a friend of mine on the road with me in St. Louis, and it was his first time coming on the road with me, and we went to do the merch table afterwards. And the first woman who approached the table started crying and then just went, your work has meant a lot, and then turned around and ran, and my friend was like, what was that? And I was like, oh, you gotta, you're gonna have to get used to that. Yeah. Like, like, you have to get used to that. That's like, great, though. I'm a comedian, I guess. <laughs> but it's a lot of people having visible, tear-filled breakdowns. Well, like, I don't know exactly how it happened, but. Well, that is a beautiful thing. That I can is... say this, too, as a philosophy professor, I don't have any fans. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Thank you once again for joining us on Chinwag, and we'll meet you here next week for part two from SF Sketchfest with Chris Gethard, when Chris tells us the absolute spookiest bovine story we've ever heard. Cows and Bigfoot make an appearance. You need to come back for that. Until then, wag on, waggers. Chinwag is a production of Treefort Media and Touchy Feely Films, hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Treefort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Original theme music by Luke Topp, with additional music by Via Mardo. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Treefort. Audio production supervision by Matt Dyson. Editing and mixing by Jeff Neal. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Research assistance by Aiden Brooks. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod. 